Hi everyone, it's Karen. Welcome to my channel. Today I have something new for you. I'm trying to do a beginner series of mixed media to basically start introducing different products and different things that you might need for mixed media. Basi basic supplies, ba basic mediums. And I'm going to dedicate each video to one of the supplies. So this is my first supply and this is Gesso. And really there's so many different companies that make gesso i mean i these are the ones that i have i actually went and collected all of these to just basically show you how many companies and these are not even all the companies there's have and there's so many different types of gessos so i'm going to really specifically talk about each one of these to just um to make sure that you understand more or less what it's all about and um one of the things i want to just start with before anything else, let's talk basically a little bit about gesso. What is gesso? Gesso is basically a primer to coat any surface. And it could be used with many different things. It could be used with acrylic paints. It could be used with oil paints, although I don't specifically use oil paints, but it can. It can be used with sprays. It could be basically used with anything. You're basically priming the same way you're priming your walls. Before you're painting a wall, you're, you're going to use gesso. It's, it's a primer for art. It actually is a mixture of like uh, glue binding and also some chalk and some pigment depending on the color. So in this case, most of them are white, but the main gesso is white but it actually there's now many different kinds there's also other ones that i'm going to talk going to talk about now now i'm going to remove things as i go along just to show you more or less the companies so the main company i use as you know is prima marketing from finabar and that's because i just really love and i've been using it for so many years i really love the consistency of it but i've also used other ones that are really really great so i'm going to talk about the differences between them this is prima marketing it's the heavy white gesso it's um it's basically a just white and i'm going to show you how thick it is it is pretty thick like you if I turn it around it won't go liquid uh, it comes there I have the heavy white gesso and this is the clear gesso from them so th I'm gonna show you the different companies so these are all the Prima marketing ones and then I have you can also have something like golden golden is a great company also that makes different kinds of mediums for art and this is the white gesso from them and it's a little bit more liquidy than the heavy gesso from prima you also have liquitex so liquitex makes a uh, lot of different types the one that i have from them because it's one that i don't have from the other companies it's the super heavy gesso so this is also one um, another company it's the crafters workshops the stenciled company which is like i really i have to say i love their products for different uses and i'm going to talk about the differences of the gessos and i also have this is a local company from here from from Toronto I mean Demco I think I mean it's not a local company it's sold in a local company and then you also have something like spray gesso Krylon this and there's so many different types of companies that create gesso oh and 13 arts that's a company from Poland and they also this is an acrylic primer basically for and it's a white gesso as well so let's uh, I want to move everything here and so I can show you what I mean So one of the things I want to talk about is consistency of the gesso and I've actually lined them up kind of from the heaviest to the lightest in terms of how liquid they, they are and I've also included here the spray gesso this is something that I've not used too often but I know people that do use it and spray it because I work in a room I would have to go outside to spray something but it does give a very nice even coat to anything and I'm guessing this is probably what they use to coat canvases because canvases do come pre-gessoed most of the white ones come pre-gessoed I've seen also black gessoed canvases so it's really great because you don't have to add the 
a coat if you don't want to but it's always good if you are going to paint on it that you do add a coat then I'm going to go with the other type of consistency this is a little bit uh, more of the liquidy side so this is the spray that I just talked about and I'm going to show you how liquidy this one is and it actually you know because it actually moves and there's a few companies that do a very light gesso like this this one um, is actually also quite liquidy it's not as liquidy as the other one but it still moves pretty easily and like i mean if i would turn this around it would spill so i mean these are clear gessos and i will talk about colors afterwards but i just want to first talk about the consistency and i have a little paper something just to show the difference uh in them uh, this one is also quite liquidy so let me show this is actually maybe a white gesso and uh, it's sometimes they get quite stuck so it's hard to open them so maybe I'll leave this one because if you do want to a trick a nice trick to do that is to put some saran wrap on top of this and then put the lid so then it doesn't get stuck to the edges because it has a glue in it it has a glue to prime it and to hold it together to bind it it does get stuck like the gel so let me just show you then with this one and I'm just going to take a brush and just basically show okay how liquidy it is and this is clear gesso so it's you know it's not making such a cover but you see that the more liquidy it is it gives you a thinner coat and I will talk about as I said the different colors afterwards then you can get into the thicker ones the thicker gesso this is the heavy gessos and um, really this one is pretty heavy that if I turn it upside down it really doesn't move it's quite thick and you can see the consistency and when I do put it on it's quite heavy-handed okay so it gives it a much better coverage it actually covers most of it most of what you're trying to achieve now this is also the white one so in that case of course it's going to cover it more but I'm going to show you for example I think this one I'll be able to open <laughs> the other one as well. so this black gesso is pretty liquidy okay and it's still it, because it's black it will give a nice coverage as well but I just want to show you that the liquid ones and I'm just trying to get another paintbrush the liquid ones also work really well so you see it gives it a nice coverage beautiful coverage now there's different instances why you would be using different things so a liquid um sorry a thicker gesso would be very helpful when you're trying to cover something to really not be able to, you don't really want to show the the background or you want to hide or you want to prime embellishments or you want to cover a piece of wood to prime it for a painting so you really want the heavy one will really go on much thicker and you won't have to put as many layers unlike the thinner one you will have to put a few more layers and that's one of the things that you can decide or you can have both if you want however having said that you could get the thicker one um, and then add some water to it and dilute it and get a much thinner consistency so you could mix it with some kind of uh, mixative or with just simply water and make and dilute it a lot however for the thinner one for example the one that is more liquidy it is much easier if you want to for example uh, let's say you have your art journal and you want to cover just the, a page and you just want to give it a light coat and so it's just look how easy it is you just give it a very light coat just because you want to cover everything but you don't really need a thick thick layer for that and it will dry much quicker so of course there's advantages and disadvantages to everything because with the thinner one you're going to get it dried quicker and your patient won't be tested as much but at the same time you will might have to put more layers if you're trying to cover up so heavy gesso is great for covering up surfaces where you want to cover everything and you don't want to put a lot of coats on it and the thinner one is for more adding it as a base for something that you don't need a lot of coats for and then I also have something that's super heavy gesso this is really really thick one it's thicker even than the heavy gesso from Prima 
I have to say it's really heavy and you only need to use this really if you're really trying to cover something really really big that you want but it's really it will take you so much longer to do this because it's so heavy that it's not as easy to apply but I have it because I've used it for certain instances where I needed to cover something really well and I was running out of patience and I really didn't want to wait for it so here is consistency and I hope you know what I mean by the different consistencies of the gessos because that's a really important aspect when you're choosing the gesso that you want to use Okay, now I'm going to talk about colors and this is really important because it's just something that people, I guess, get confused a lot when you're using different, when they have different colors of the gesso. So I'm going to start with the most common gesso is white gesso. We talked about consistency, so I'm really specifically talking just about the color. It's white. It actually has white chalk in it and that's what gives it the color white. And it combined with that glue that I said before, the glue binding glue, but the white one is the one that they put on the canvases. So if you see a white canvas, you know that that's basically was covered in white gesso. It could have been that it was the spray one like this one or and most the most common one is white and it's the one that you can use to cover up things really well especially the heavy one you could take any type of embellishment you could take any type of anything and cover it up so that's a great thing to use for when you're wanting to cover things and then using acrylic paint or oil paint or sprays or anything like that another one that i really love using is the clear gesso and one of the reasons why i think clear gesso is great is because you want to have that grit that the gesso has you want to have that porous surface because what the heavy gesso does i mean what the gesso does is that it creates that porous surface that you can add then all the other mediums on it like the paint and everything else so you want to have that porous surface, but you don't want to, let's say, cover up anything. For example, let's say you're doing a layout, okay, and you have this beautiful paper or this beautiful paper, okay, and you really want this beautiful beauty to be in the background. And uh, you can add clear gesso on top of it. And like you saw before, here it is that other piece. I added that clear gesso here in the corner and you don't really see it. So it will not cover up anything but it will give you if you touch this part of this paper it's pretty smooth well if you touch this part of this paper is actually really gritty it actually feels almost rough and the reason why that works is because if you add anything to this number one it's going to protect the page but number two it's going to let you add mediums on it and it will not will not soak underneath as much but also will if let's say you make a mistake you can easily remove it or it will just let you add mediums on top without having any issues so that's a really great thing for clear gesso and you can use clear gesso on canvases on any embellishment on anything that you want a lot of people basically clear gesso everything no matter what i have some friends that use clear gesso on everything i'm not the type of person who uses gesso and everything as a rule i kind of learned when i'm supposed to use gesso and when i'm not so that's basically the key to thing is just basically experimenting and knowing when to do it i really like using gesso especially the white and the clear in my art journals because that helps with um, prepping the page for the next stage the next one and is very commonly used especially by finnabar herself herself is the black gesso and she this is her heavy black gesso but you can also have the, the light consistency of it the liquidy consistency and both work just beautifully and this is great when you really want to give a good cover to everything and cover it all and make you know it's great the black gesso works amazingly when you're using metallics and then you cover everything in metal and then using some i mean you cover everything in black gesso and then using some metallic colors acrylic paints or sprays so that's a really great thing because black gesso really covers everything you will not say let's say you have a bunch of elements that are all different that are white and some of them are gold and some of them are um, black and some of them are silver you can basically use 
black gesso or even white gesso sometimes and basically cover it all another thing is like and if you see like you can actually buy uh, them in different containers this is a this is a container also this is a thing was sold at michael's and you can just you know use it as a tube i do like it better in the tubs only because um you can you know put things back so i took some on my mat and then i can put it back in another great color is that this is only few companies have this and that is uh golden gesso and silver gesso so this as i said demco is a local um local brand but you can probably find at blix blix might have its own brand as well and they have also blix also carries their own brand of white heavy gesso and black gesso and clear and everything and this one is by the crafters workshop this too and they're beautiful they're very very shimmery however you can also create the nice thing about gesso is that you can mix it with many different things so you could mix it with uh beads inside you could put beads inside and make something really fun out of it you could mix it with uh, mica powders and create your own color and that is just something great that you can do with gesso and you can make any color you want with it and it will have that same consistency so, so that's really good when you talk about colors so again i'm gonna just um go back and say about the clear gesso how it's best to use when you don't want to cover something but you still want that really nice gritty texture to be underneath the white and the black one is more is are better to for you to cover things the black one really will cover everything black and the white one will do it all white and you might have to do a few more coats if you're covering something that is darker and these two are really really good to do when you actually make a mistake and let's say you created a whole painting or a canvas and you just really don't know what to do with it you could just take the whole thing and cover it up with white gesso and start anew and the last ones is the golden and the silver those are great for accents or for just you know for uh, mixing with other things and it's just really nice to have that extra thing that you don't have to make your own you could just buy yourself these but if you're going to go with the necessities i would go with clear the white gesso and the black gesso and as always i'm always going to i always link everything in the description area so i'm going to link these two different companies and you basically make a decision which ones you want i don't want to um kind of influence you in any direction if you want to have a lighter gesso or like a liquidy gesso then this is the one that you would want heavy gesso clear gesso so there is just different things choices that you can make Now let's talk a little bit about the uses of gesso so as i said mentioned before a canvas this is a, just a regular canvas and it's been already primed with gesso but if you really want to have a thick consistency a great thing to do is just put heavy gesso on top or just give it another coat if you're going to put st heavy stuff on it and you want it to really be uh, really be good for what you're doing you can put another coat for example in a canvas like this which has like you know um kind of a different color and you might not want to cover then a great thing to do is using the clear gesso so that's a really great thing to do so you see what i mean there's different options that you can you can use um so that's for priming things it's the number one use that most people do is um sorry that's putting my things down is for priming and the great thing is to prime basically your pages so usually I do either white or clear gesso and what I suggest for you to do is to actually get yourself a journal like this this is just a dil my dilutions journal but it could be any type of mixed media journal you can go to any anywhere online or in the local store and basically just experiment with things so that's a really thing good thing to do it's just experimenting and adding things on and i want to add it i'm going to add gesso only to half of this page so i can show you the differences between um a gessoed page and a non-gessoed page okay so this is basically what i'm going to do it's a fun thing and a fun experiment to show you uh what to do so while i let this dry so this is the number one use as i said is priming so i'm going to let this dry and i'm going to show you a second use in the meantime 
So a second use is basically converting something into something else. You could take an old vase, you can take some kind of jar, you can take a lid, you can take another a box, just basically anything. And you can coat them. And I'm not going to coat this jar because I haven't decided what I want to do with it. But somebody gave it to me and I just thought, oh, it's so pretty, I'm not sure. But then I'm thinking, oh, I could really transform this into something else. So it's really good to put a layer of gesso before you do anything to it that way you're you're really giving that prime um, and you're giving that base to anything else that you're going to put so another thing is to give a change something into something else in same with this for example you have this heart this is a, just a wooden heart and it could be a metal piece as well so it doesn't really matter what it is and you just take for example something like black gesso and a little paintbrush and you could just basically cover it oh this wet paintbrush is too wet hold on don't so this is what I meant when you have something wet you could go ahead and um, and dry it up or you can dilute your gesso so you see what I mean you could really look at what beautiful coat it gives it gives it and this you can then use with for something else the same thing you could do is cover it in white and it would give you a different effect so that's a really really great way of using something I'm just wiping and cleaning my things always clean your paintbrushes and your um, and your palette knives I always have wipes everywhere so I can clean my hands especially with black gesso it just gets everywhere so let's let this dry so as I get you can transform one thing into something else so that's a great use of gesso so number one is priming number two is transforming something into something else another great thing that you can do with gesso and let me show you it's mixing it into uh, mixing things into it so you could use uh, this is my placemat this is a Ken Oliver placemat and it's really really great it's one of the best ones that I've seen there on the market but a lot of there's so many other ones as well that you can use so I could go directly onto this and then clean it and that works out really well but just so I don't dirty it and I don't spend time cleaning it right now I'm going to show you what I can actually mix with things so with black gesso for example you could mix things but it's going to make it difficult to be seen unless it's something very very bright because the black will cover everything so the best thing to do if you're going to mix things is going to mix it either with the clear gesso or with the white gesso so things that you can mix into it okay so let's take a little uh palette knife and i'm going to show you kind of like what you could mix into it i'm not going to mix every single thing but you could really mix things and then add them to your project so that's really good to do so this is with my clear gesso i'm going to put it here and i'm going to also do it with my white gesso just to show you the difference and uh, this one is a very liquidy consistency i want to show it to you also in the heavy one just so you can see the difference so let me grab here the heavy one now the problem is that clear gesso dries clear but it's still white when you see it on the um, when you see it in your how do you call this in your when you're applying things to it when you're using it so that's why don't get confused in that sense okay so things you can mix into it okay you could mix like i said beads or micro beads or mica flakes you could mix glitter i've mixed glitter glitter before you could mix in there some glitter and it will just make it all glittery i'm not going to do that one today but because it just makes a big big mess but i want to show you what you do you could use mica powders and those are my favorite ones just because you can really turn something uh, into another color so you could make this almost like blue paint so because this is an acrylic kind of primer you could turn this into an acrylic paint then you could actually paint with it so let me just mix it up and if you think you don't have enough you can always add more um, 
So this is really great. The mica, uh, the mica powder does not have any binding in it. So when you're using it, it with the gesso, it actually binds it. And you can add as much color as you want to create the darkness, I mean, the consistency of the color, the shade of the color that you want. And you could mix two colors inside of it and so forth. Another great, so this is I'm going to use on my journal that is drying right now. Another things that you could use is something like color bursts or brushes, and you could just put them inside. And these are basically powdered pigment, and it's just really strong color. So you just this one you just spray. Okay, I'll take another palette knife for this one and mix it. Okay, this is a completely different color and how beautiful is this so you could actually this is the white one it's a bit thicker and you can add more of course I just don't want to add too too much because I'm just just a demonstration so let me just I'll put a little bit more just so you can really see the color and you can add as much as you like of this okay so there you go look how orangey this is now let me move this aside and I want to show you how to use this so this will take me into the next uh, use for gesso which is after you've done what you like with the color you can actually apply it in different ways so when you're using things and let me just dry this a little bit with my heat tool so always have your heat tool right beside you so you could um so you could dry things quickly especially gesso and the nice thing about gesso it does dry pretty fairly quickly i'm just going to smooth it out a little bit so that way it really dries quick the thicker the layer the longer it will take to dry so just you know that for further when you're going to use it in different things okay so there we go so now we have this dry so there's two options two things that you can do kind of in terms of texturizing so gesso <coughs> excuse me gesso can be used for using text doing texture so for example you could just simply apply it okay and okay and just create your own texture with it you could do this with white gesso as well you can use um make like you know you can use like a texturizing brush for it and create it so it's almost like a you could you be used like acrylic paint and you see here i turned it into blue so then i have blue using blue in this as well so and let's say if you make a mistake the nice thing about it is that you could Go ahead and wipe it off you see how easy it is to wipe it off because you have that gesso in the background it comes off really easily and it doesn't ruin the page so that's really nice and once it dries it's permanent another great way to use it is using a stencil so i just grabbed any stencil i had this is a really i think it's a vicky butin stencil and i just want to show you how nice it looks through a stencil so basically you could use and i do recommend that if you're going to use uh, it through a stencil use the heavy gesso because the liquid one will just run underneath the stencil and you don't really want that to happen and even if the heavy one that does do that sometime as well and that's okay um part of the mixed media process is making those type of mistakes but it just creates that really nice pattern and that's really nice and you could while it's still wet you could remove any area that you didn't get properly but you can see remember i didn't put gesso on this side okay so what happens when i actually want to remove things and let's say i want to remove you see i'm trying to remove things it's not as easy you see before it was just so smooth to remove it was it's not as easy to do and it leaves more marks so it's basically and it also ruins the page i can feel if you can't really see it here but it's actually peeling the page well here i'm going back and forth and it actually protected the page is still smooth so it's really important to like if you're going to work especially in your art journal that you go ahead and you gesso everything in the back however let's say you didn't like this you did look how ugly this looks or and you don't like it you can go back and take your white gesso and cover it all up and what it will do is it will have that a little bit of texture in the back but it will be all white and you can just start anew as if nothing so 
Um, that's a really great use to use it to make texture either on its own or through a stencil. So that's the third use. And um, you could also, well, the cute way, because I need to clean my stencil. So I'm just going to basically clean it on top of that and it will still create a little bit of the pattern. Um, so that's the third use is mix is um, sorry now I lost count but it was mixing it with with things that was the second and then the third one is creating the texture so that's really good to do and I'm going to dry it up so I can go ahead and show you the next technique the next product that you can use on top of gesso is sprays and it could be any type of spray I just grabbed one of the blue ones that I had and I'm going to spray on both sides and I want to show you the difference of how it absorbs into the page so when you're using it here where I, this is the side that I added gesso and then I'm going to spray it on this side okay you can see right away that this is immediately absorbing into the background while this one is kind of staying in the surface a little bit more liquidy and now you can see what the difference of the gesso does so the gesso is really protecting the page and if you as i said you really don't like it you can remove most of it well here look at this i cannot remove it anymore it just stays in the page it absorbed into the paper and i'm done i cannot do anything about it well here if i continue working i can probably remove most of it especially with water-based sprays so this is a water-based spray um so it can remove I mean, i'm not sure actually if there's any other types of spray and you could also use gelatos on this any type of art uh, crayon or anything like that so it really makes a huge difference it really protects the page especially if you're doing stuff like scrapbooking and mixed media scrapbooking and protecting that paper is a really really big thing to do so that's a really important use of gesso and it's another technique that you can do is that the protection of the page it's really important to know that that's something that if you really want to protect your page or you really want to protect your artwork gesso it first going along with the protection before i show you how to use the metallics on gesso i wanted to talk about things that are made out of paper like paper flowers a lot of people in scrapbooking and also in mixed media they like using flowers and if you're using metal flowers they're pretty sturdy and you can transform them into anything but paper flowers or cloth uh, made out of cloth are really hard to uh, do when you're actually spraying them so a great way to do is to use the white gesso or the clear gesso to protect them and that that way you could add things like spray you could add things like um, paint on them and then it will really protect them from getting all warped up and looking really ugly so that's a really good technique to use as well uh, but I want to show you something how to do how to use it with the uh, metallic paints and I'm going to grab a small paintbrush um, looking for one yes so I really debated whether or not to do this as a as a um, project of, like all this mixed media techniques and to do a whole basically class on this but I really thought that, you know, so many people are beginners and are really wanting to learn about mixed media and I want to do this for free so I could actually help as many of you as you can to really love it as much as I do. So here I am and it looks really nice when you're adding metallic paints onto it. So I'm going to do half a heart with metallic so you can see how beautiful it is and what a nice... Um, consistency it gives you I'm just going to turn it around and show you what would happen if I just put it straight on this look at the difference and how it makes it not as prominent so it still looks nice if you just give it I want to give it a shimmery look and this is just acrylic paint but this really looks prominent and you could also use it with white gesso as well the other cool thing that I really love and this is more of a recent one is basically uh, these waxes and you could use any type of wax on black gesso it looks really really good um, the only th reason why I like these waxes from Finiber specifically only because they are not as tar they don't feel as toxic they don't smell as toxic as other ones but there's different ones that are out there so you could apply this on black gesso and 
it almost makes it look like paint and look how beautiful that is so i really love all the uses that you can have with black gesso with white gesso and let's say you didn't like how this turned out although i really like it and you want to cover it up again you take the black gesso again or the white gesso you might have white might have to put a few coats of it but you can just basically start it all again so that's the beauty of gesso it just has so many uses it can be diluted with water you really can actually take i've taken white gesso and made it made it used as paint and basically diluted it with water and then did some splatters on my background so i just basically took the heavy gesso and i took a spray bottle and mixed it up oops well that one had a little bit of yellow paint but you know what i mean you see it has and it makes it such a nice light consistency that you could use it almost as a spray and you could actually go and spray here i'll show you for example on this page hold on i've used this where i could actually splatter it oops this is not good this is when okay i can actually splatter it on the background and create some really cool splatters with it so i just go ahead and dilute it and you can use it just as white paint which is really really great the last thing i want to talk about is tools that you can use with gesso so how to apply it and things like that so the most important one is basically a brushes any different type of brushes depending on the size and how much you need to apply a very big tip that you should do is make sure you wash them really well as you can see these brushes i'm actually showing you what can happen between the gesso and the gel if you don't take care of them they become really really hard because they have that binding glue inside so make sure you wash them really well with soap you could like do i have some a video on how to clean brushes and palette knives after they're all gunked up and it's um a really cool technique based uh, video another really good tool for applying gesso are palette knives any type of palette knife would work you could make designs in it or just basically apply it like butter uh, an amazing tool is this uh, silicone brush from Prima Marketing from Finabar, and this is really, really good. That's one of my favorite tools because it goes really, really smooth on. Um, it's really good to have like some baby wipes on hand, a uh, spray bottle if you want, so you can basically uh, dilute it. You should be have definitely should have a heat tool of some kind. You should have a mat so it doesn't stain everything. And just basically any type of tools you could have like um, brushes that you know texturizing brushes. This is a dual brush that has the texturizing, but there's also texturizing brushes that can create really cool effects. Uh, have a jar of water handy or some kind of thing like you know old pot that you could like wash the wash it right away or leave it in water so that's really good i've really handy things to have with gesso so there's just simple tools i mean this is like general tools that you should have for mixed media in general this is not only for gesso this is basically applies to almost every medium in mixed media you need to have these essentials and that's something that you should have on hand so you can always you're always ready for whatever it uh, comes your way So I really want you to just experiment. Mixed media is all about experimenting. Um, I have a video on like, first of all, I talk about the 10 most common mistakes people make about mixed media or believe about mixed media and not specifically um, like, you know, it's not ac actually about mixed media. It's about the fear that people have of experimenting and trying out different techniques. And this is why I recommend for people to get like, you know, an art journal and experiment different things with it and then you can take all these paints and gesso and i will talk about other products in the next few videos i want to make one about gel and also about modeling paste and about texture paste so those are going to be coming up in the next few weeks so just stay tuned for those and i'm really excited to start this uh, new adventure and trying to uh, help out beginners of mixed media and but uh, you know what even a non-beginner could really benefit and learn from many different things that i've said today and if you have any other ideas please always share them in the comments 
So that way people can benefit from those as well and learn from everything. And the most important thing, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Uh, so many people are afraid to make mistakes. Well, Jesso, you know what? Jesso is the biggest band-aid for everything. It's like almost, I really want to call it a band-aid because it really heals things and actually, you know, covers things up so you could actually start everything anew. So that's a really, really important thing. Um, I know I gave a lot of information today and you could obviously you could watch this over again and please share with your friends. It's really important for me to um, know that you like the content and that you can help somebody else by sharing this and go watch some more of my other mixed media videos, the ones that talk about how mixed media helps, how art generally helps me and basically just enjoy the process don't worry about making mistakes mistakes are part of it and the more mistakes you make the more you learn and the more mistakes you make the more art opportunities there are so just really really exciting and just go for it it's really really important just go for it and have fun and thank you so much everyone for coming uh sorry that you're just looking at this ugly page here i don't know maybe i'll give you guys this to look at so thank you so much everyone and have an amazing day and go experiment and if you do um share or experiment with anything that you learned today please share it and tag me on social media so then i know that you've done something i always comment on people's projects and things so please go ahead and share and just enjoy yourselves bye <laughs>